Welcome and uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Frank Balinfi and uh, I am the leader of the technical support team at TEL. Uh, today's topic uh, is the Gate Control Pro, uh, which uh, is a smart controller for gate automation. The most important uh, points of the presentation are the key functions of the product, uh, the product models, and uh, I will also uh, mention a few information about the hardware, and then we'll go through the mobile application and some basic settings uh, which are needed to put the device in operation. Uh, let me share my screen first. I hope you can see it. Um, let's see uh, which are the application areas for this product. Uh, as a controller for gates, you can use uh, this uh, device for electric gates, for garage doors, for barriers, for uh, automatic uh, rising bollards, for parking garages, residential parks, or even for other controls, since uh, the device has a universal dry contact output, so basically you can control uh, you can control any equipment with it, which can be controlled uh, with contacts. Uh, let's see which are the key functions of the product. Uh, this device enables you to control your electric gate using the mobile application or even by call at the same time. Uh, one gate control device can control up to two gates or two separate wings of a gate. Uh, for example, the pedestrian access and the full access for cars uh, due to the two relay outputs. So we can use the two relay outputs to control two different things. Uh, user permissions and uh, entry periods can be configured for each user separately. You can also configure scheduled controls uh, by which the device can open the gate automatically, hold it locked in open state for the configured period of time, uh, and you can do this for uh, up to 20 times a day. Uh, the device can send notification to any user if the gate fails to open or fails to close. Uh, and it also shows the state of the gate, which is the open or closed state, in the mobile application. Uh, this is done uh, using a gate position limit switch, which has to be installed separately on the gate. So that's an optional um, thing. Uh, it also it can also send a notification about the doorbell activity or a technical error using its dry contact inputs. So uh, if, for example, your gate automation has an error output, you can connect it to the input of the gate control, and when that output activates, the gate control will send the notification. Uh, the gate control can report uh, the state of up to four dry contact inputs by email, SMS, or call, for which you can configure the message. Uh, for calls, there is no voice message, it's just for ringing a number. The device also supports up to two on with IP cameras and uh, shows the camera pictures in the mobile application. You can use this, for example, to view the gate. It can also send the event logs by email uh, and uh, also other reports, such as the uh, unauthorized opening attempt or change of the settings. Now let's see which are the product models. Uh, we have a 2G, 3G, and 4G model, which you can find here in the product range in the gate automation section, um, and a Wi-Fi model. Uh, 
basically, there is no difference in uh, functioning between the 2G, 3G, and the 4G model. Uh, the only difference is the built-in modem, which is a 2G, 3G, or a 4G modem. Uh, for the Wi-Fi version, uh, this one uh, does not require a SIM card because it does not have a built-in modem. So uh, this device works uh, with Wi-Fi only, and uh, therefore uh, the functions related to calls and SMS sending are not available uh, in this model. Now let's see what are the peripheries on this device. Uh, it has a USB port, which you can use for local programming and uh, firmware update. It has an antenna connector where you can connect the GSM antenna. Uh, it has a SIM card bay where you can insert uh, the SIM card. Uh, a status LED, which shows the status of the device. And on the other side, it has uh, the system connector where you can connect the power, plus and minus. Uh, the device uh, can work with uh, 12 to 20 volt, 24 volts AC and DC as well, and uh, supports over voltage uh, till 30 volts. Uh, if there is a higher over voltage, uh, it can support that, uh, it can resist for a short time only. It has a polyfuse built in for this purpose. So uh, if uh, the polyfuse gets damaged, uh, it will um, protect the, the circuit. So the polyfuse is a cheap uh, component which we can replace thereafter. The device uh, is also provided with a UVLO uh, circuit, which uh, protects the device against low voltage. Um, this means that if uh, the voltage goes below a critical level, this circuit will switch off the device automatically and will turn it back on only when the voltage restores to 12 volts or above. Next, you can see the four contact inputs where you can connect the dry contacts, which will activate the inputs. The dry contacts should be connected between the V minus and the given input. Uh, the contacts can be normally open or normally closed. You can configure that in the settings. And we have the two normally open relay outputs, which are also dry contacts. Uh, on our website, uh, if you scroll down to the download section, you can find the actual manual, the software, and the firmware as well, with um, uh, some information. For example, where you can find the, the switch, which you can use for firmware update. Uh, the, the instructions for uh, updating the firmware you can find uh, in the manual. Now, let me share the screen of my phone and I will show you how the application works. We have uh, two applications for this product. One is the admin application, which is uh, designed for administrators and super administrators. And we have a user version, which is just for users to control the gate. Of course, you can also control the gate in the admin application as well. Uh, let's see first the admin application. We have uh, three gate control devices registered in this application. So if we want to control uh, one of the devices, we have to select the given uh, gate control. 
And then uh, you can see here at the bottom, you have the gate opening uh, option. So when we press this button, the application sends a command to the device, which will open the gate. And we also have a camera button, which uh, will show the picture of the camera, which shows the gate. You can also view this in full screen if you rotate the phone. Okay, now let's close it back. Uh, if you also have uh, a gate position limit switch installed, you can see the position of the gate, if it's open or closed, on the control button. Uh, for this gate, uh, we don't have uh, this installed, but uh, I will show you um, this feature in the user application. We also have another gate control for, for garage, which we can open and close. I will close it back. So that's how controlling the gates work in the application. Uh, if you select a gate control where you are registered as an admin user or a super admin user, uh, you can find a hamburger menu on the top left corner. And uh, here you have different options available uh, through which you can configure a few uh, settings in the device. For example, you can download the event logs from the given device. You can set up group rules, which uh, you can apply to users, to uh, calls. Uh, you can also add scheduled controls. Uh, you can configure access templates, which will apply to users in the device. Uh, you can also download uh, users for which you have a filter. Okay, so uh, we have two users here, both are super administrators. And if you want to edit the setting, just tap on the edit button. And you can configure uh, the role for this user, super administrator, administrator, or normal user, and uh, the permissions, access to cameras, access to gates, if uh, there are two gates controlled by the given device. And also custom rules, if necessary. For each user, you can configure a uh, custom rules so you can allow or deny the given user against the access template or the custom rule oh sorry the, the, the group rule which applies the given user uh, 
if you want, you can also add users from here. You just have to type the name, the phone number, and uh, configure the permissions for the given user. And uh, with this, the given user can control then the gate by calls, but uh, the mobile app has to be registered by, by the given user on his mobile phone. And you can also configure the holidays in a calendar uh, just by clicking on the date. Uh, Holidays are used for access templates and schedule controls, which we will see later in the, the desktop application. Okay, uh, on the right side, we have the application menu where you can add a new device. This is done by just uh, reading a QR code. Uh, I will show you this uh, later. And you can change the settings of the application. You can um, set up a uh, password for protection. Uh, you can change the background of the application. You can change the language. Uh, and you can change the appearance as well, uh, the colors and backgrounds of the buttons. And if you have more than one gate, you can also change the, the order of the gates. Okay. You also have here an on with camera test uh, option. This allows you to test your, your uh, IP camera with the application still before buying the device. You can download the application for free from uh, uh, the Google Play or uh, from the App Store. And you can open this menu, uh, copy and paste the link of your camera here in this box and then click on the test button. So if the picture of the camera appears, it means that the application will work with your camera. Basically, it should work with all on with cameras, but we know that uh, there are several uh, on with protocol versions, so there might be um, also cameras which uh, will not work with the application, we don't know, but you can try. Now, let me show you the user application. Just one moment, please. I have to share another home screen. I have to restart the phone because uh, it won't let me share the screen for some reason.
Okay, uh, let me continue with uh, the desktop application and uh, I will show you the user application later because I can't connect to Wi-Fi for some reason. Uh, we will solve that, I think, in a few minutes. Until then, uh, I will show you the, the desktop application. Uh, how can we connect to the device in order to program the settings? Uh, there are two ways for this, uh, USB connection and uh, connection over the cloud. Uh, you can connect over the cloud only after you have configured the basic settings and uh, after the device uh, could connect to the cloud already. Uh, now for the USB connection, uh, you have a USB connection password, which is uh, one, two, three, and four by default. You have to enter the password and click on the connect button or hit enter key. We can see that uh, we successfully connected to the device. You can see that here at the bottom and uh, you have the super admin level access through USB. Uh, you can change the USB password here in this section. And uh, you can also restart the device if it's necessary for some reason, or you can uh, restore the factory default settings. You can restore the settings even without knowing the password if the device is not locked. If it is locked, in that case, you will have to log in with the password uh, change the setting to unlock and then you can restore the default settings. This, settings. this setting is here in the advanced settings section. Uh, it's this one, locking the device. So we can see that now it is unlocked and if you lock it, you won't be able to reset the settings until you change this back to unlock. Okay. Uh, Let's see which are the basic settings which uh, you have to configure in order to put the device in operation. Uh, first, uh, please choose the general uh, menu. Uh, in order to manage the settings, first you have to read the settings from the device with this button. Then you can change the settings and then you have to write them back in the device. Uh, the device settings and the user settings are uh, different blocks which you have to read and write separately. 
So if you want to read the users, you have to go here in the users section and click on read users and then it will read the users from the device. Now, in the general menu, uh, you have to configure the APN, which is the access point name. This is necessary uh, for the device to connect to the mobile internet. Uh, you can get this from uh, the service provider where you have purchased the SIM card. Uh, in some cases, uh, the, the device uh, might require an APN username and a password. Uh, you can also get this from the service provider. Uh, and then you can enter that here and you can use it. Uh, if you want to log the device with a PIN code, you can enter the SIM card PIN code here and uh, enable the PIN code request on the SIM card using a mobile phone. In this section, you can enter the phone number of the given SIM card. This is used by the mobile application to control the gate uh, when uh, there is a problem with the mobile internet, either on the mobile application side or on the gate control device side. In that case, uh, the application automatically uh, will uh, uh, offer to control the gate by call and the phone number is taken from this section here. Uh, you have to enable the cloud usage if you want to use the device with the mobile application. If this is disabled, uh, the device will never connect to the cloud and in that case, you can use the device with calls only. Uh, the cloud uh, usage will generate a data usage of about 12 megabytes per month uh, due to the supervision messages which uh, are needed to uh, keep the connection with uh, the cloud. Um, we have tested the, the data usage with about uh, 100 openings per day and a few emails and some remote programming and uh, the result was about uh, 22 to 25 megabytes per month. Of course, this depends on how frequently you you use uh, remote programming, for example, or how many openings or, uh, or uh, email sendings there are. In the device name section, you can add a custom name to your device. This will be used in email reports. Uh, Next important thing is the region settings where you can configure the push notification language, the date format, and the time zone, as well as the first day of the week. And uh, in the SMS forwarding phone number section, you can enter a number where uh, the device will send the SMS messages receive on its SIM card. So these can be forwarded. For example, if you are using a prepaid type SIM card, uh, you can get the forwarded information about the balance which is sent by the service provider. Uh, when this is done and you write the settings in the device, the device should already be able to connect to the cloud and uh, then you can already register uh, the users. Uh, the connection you can check here in the status monitoring menu. You have here the cloud connection option which now shows that it is connected. Uh, this will also show you the IP address of the SIM card so if uh, it does not receive an IP address it means that there is some problem with the mobile internet service on the given SIM card or with the APN. And you can also check the GSM signal uh, in this section. Uh, 
So if it's too low, please uh, move the antenna uh, so you can get a higher uh, signal. Here you can also see the supply voltage uh, of uh, the device and the firmware, firmware version and the model and the ICC ID of the SIM card as well. Uh, we'll also show you the actual status of the inputs and the two outputs. Uh, the next most important setting is uh, the output setting. Uh, with this option, you can uh, configure how the outputs should work when they are controlled. Uh, for this, we have uh, five control modes in the device uh, in order to be compatible with the most uh, gate automation uh, control boards available on the market. The first two control modes are almost the same. These are used for two gates. Of course, you can use them for one gate if you, if you control only one output. But basically, these are designed uh, for two gates. Uh, the difference between them is uh, in controlling by call. Uh, for control mode number one, if uh, the caller sends the phone number, so if the caller ID is presented in the call, the device will control output number one, while when it receives a, a call from a private number, so the caller ID is not presented, it will control output number two. Uh, users can add the phone number of the device uh, in the phone book of, uh, of their phones, uh, both ways. So if uh, the normal number is entered, the phone will send the phone number, will present the caller ID, while if you enter the hash 31 hash GSM code in front of the number, uh, in that case the mobile phone will uh, hide the phone number so it will make a call from a private number. Uh, for control mode number two, uh, only identified calls are accepted and you have to configure in advance in the user settings which output to be controlled uh, when a call is received. Output number one, output number two or both at the same time. You can do that in the user settings here. So trigger output one, trigger output two, or trigger both at the same time when the call is received from the given user. Uh, for these two control modes, uh, you will have two control buttons in the mobile application. And uh, these can also be enabled or disabled in the user settings here with these two options, with access to output one, access to output two. This applies to the mobile application. And for the next, three control modes. These are designed for one gate. Uh, control mode number three uh, can be used for control boards uh, which uh, require the opening and closing signal on the same input. So they have only one input and when they receive an impulse they will open the gate, on the next impulse they will close the gate. Uh, in that case, you can uh, connect output number one to the opening and closing uh, input, and you can use uh, output number two to keep the gate open uh, for a period of time, which you can configure here in the settings. Okay, so if we select, for example, control mode number three, uh, we can configure 
uh, the time for the impulses, which is x, y, x, w, y, and z. This means uh, how long the relay will be activated to perform that action. Uh, how you can keep the gate open with this control mode? Uh, you can keep it open by uh, connecting, by inserting the uh, output two in the circuit of the photo cell. Let me show you how you do that. It's right here. So the output number two is interrupted through the photo cell and then uh, connected to, to the photo cell input. Uh, in this case, what will happen? Uh, when you start an opening, the gate controller will open the gate and then will uh, open the photo cell loop just like when an obstacle uh, appears in the photocell ray, and we'll keep the gate open using this, uh, uh, this action. Then we close back, and we'll close the gate if necessary. If the gate is uh, programmed to close back automatically, uh, you don't need this impulse, so you can set it to zero. For control mode number four and number five, this can be used for uh, control boards which require the opening and closing signal on different inputs. So output one will open the gate and output two will close the gate. Uh, and with this uh, parameter y, you can configure how long the gate should be open. Uh, for, gate, for the control mode number five, um, it's quite the same with a small difference that you have to um, call the gate for opening and call again for closing. So make two calls or two commands from uh, the mobile application. So in this case, you can decide when you want to close back the gate. And next important thing is uh, the gate, po gate position limit switch. If you want to use that, uh, you can find the settings here in the inputs menu. Uh, you can connect the gate position limit switches to input number three and number four. Uh, input number three receives the gate position limit switch of gate number one, while input number four receives the gate position limit switch of gate number two. Just like that here in, in uh, the diagram. Uh, if you have connected um, a position limit switch, you have to enable that in this section. And uh, in that case, you can configure the opening and closing timeout, which means that uh, if the gate won't open in five seconds after being controlled, the device will send the failure message. And if it won't close back uh, 25 seconds after being open, it will send the closing uh, failure message. Uh, inputs number one and number two uh, can be used for doorbell, technical error, or even for gate opening. So if you connect uh, a dry contact from your doorbell to input number one, uh, and you choose this option, the device uh, will send a doorbell push notification when the doorbell is activated. Uh, for the technical error, uh, if you connect the technical error output of uh, your gate automation to this input, 
uh, and select this option, then it will send the, the technical error message when the input is activated. And you can also use uh, gate opening. So if you want to, to install a push button, which you can use locally to open and close the gate or the barrier, you can do that. Uh, or you can use it for um, example, if you want to use a camera which can uh, detect the registration number of a, of a vehicle uh, and it has an output that controls the gate if uh, the given uh, car has access. Uh, in that case, you can use this input to connect to the camera and the camera will be able to open the gate through the gate controller which will, of course, uh, log the given action in the, in the event logs. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, we have fixed the, the problem with the uh, mobile application, with the mirroring, basically. So let me show you the mobile application now. Moment, this is still trying to share the screen. Okay. Yes. This is the gate control user application. Um, here I have uh, only one gate control uh, register. It's uh, this one here on my table. And with this one, you can control up to two gates. Let's see how it works. You can see uh, on the control button that uh, it has changed, which means that the gate is now in open state. And it automatically opens the camera, uh, which is uh, associated with a given gate. And now when the gate closes back, you can see that the button changes. The same for output number two. Of course, uh, you can also uh, see the camera larger picture. If you tap on the camera button and uh, you can see in full screen if you rotate your phone. On the left side, you have uh, a menu where you can uh, add a new gate control device. Uh, 
You can configure the application settings. You can use night mode if you want the language. And you have the IP camera testing option, just like uh, in the admin application. There is also a subscription menu where you can check your subscriptions. Uh, there are a few options which uh, will need a uh, subscription, such as uh, voice control and uh, uh, unlimited registration of uh, gate control devices. You can register up to two uh, gate control devices for free. And uh, there will be also options to use the device with uh, Amazon Alexa uh, later. This is uh, under development right now. Uh, on the right side, uh, you have another settings menu which refers to the given gate control device. Uh, here you can change the device name. Uh, you can select an icon for the device and you can configure the gates and the cameras one by one. You can even change the gate name here. Uh, you can display uh, on a widget. You can use also widgets for that. I will show you when uh, we exit the application, but we enable this option. Uh, you also have a reopening protection, which uh, will, won't let you uh, control the given gate again within 10 seconds. Okay, let's enable the widget for, camera, for output two as well. And uh, for the cameras, you can also uh, open the camera from a widget. You can change the camera name. If your camera requires a username and a password, uh, you can enter that here. And here you can associate the camera with the gate. So uh, the application will automatically open the, the camera when the given gate is controlled. For how long? You can set that in seconds here. And you can also turn on using only through Wi-Fi if you want. In the device information section, you can find the status of the device. Yes, and here we have the widgets, so we can control the gate from here directly, or we can view the camera if necessary. This is our production line at TEL. Okay, let's control the gate. And let's see what happens if uh, the gate won't open. So it won't open in five seconds, you receive a notification about an opening failure. Now I simulate gate opening but one close back in 25 seconds. Uh, and in that case, uh, it should send another uh, error message about closing. Let's see how the doorbell function works. If I activate input number one, which is now configured for doorbell, a message is received about the doorbell and the technical error works the same way. It is.
let's see how you can register the device. For that, I have to delete the device, which I can do here. I have to delete it here as well. Okay, and it got deleted, so now I don't have any device uh, registered. Uh, you can find the QR code for the registration here in the mobile devices menu by clicking on the QR code uh, button. There are two types of registration, a direct registration for which uh, you have to use the hot registration password which you can configure in this section. So if you read this QR code and enter the password, uh, the registration will be done directly in the device. Uh, and there is another type of registration which is uh, done uh, with approval. Uh, if you read this QR code, uh, a message will be sent to all administrators in the device and they can approve or decline your registration on their mobile phone after uh, configuring uh, your permissions. Let's do it now directly. After reading the QR code, you have to enter your name. Then your phone number. This will be the number which you can use to control the device uh, by call. and the, the app registration password, which you can change in the section, uh, the app registration password section in the software. And when this is done, you can already control the game in the mobile application. see what other settings are available for users. Uh, in this section, you can see all the users registered in the device and you can edit them by, by double clicking on the given user or by selecting them and clicking on the edit button. Uh, here you can change the phone number. Uh, you can't change uh, the name of the user if uh, you have to change the name of a user, you have to delete it and register again. You can change the role of the given user, user admin or super admin. Uh, users can only control the gate. Uh, admins uh, can only access um, 
settings relating to users, while super admins can access all the settings. Uh, using the access templates, uh, you can configure the time when opening is permitted for the given user. Uh, now I have added a few templates here. Uh, you can select one or even more uh, templates for the same user. And in the, in the access templates uh, section, you can configure these templates. Up to 50 templates can be added here. Uh, in the templates, you can configure uh, the time period for uh, opening. So, uh, according to this template, the given user to whom this template uh, is uh, uh, assigned, the given user will be able to control the gate from 7 to 9 o'clock on Mondays and Tuesdays, Wednesdays, so on, on weekdays from 7 to 9. And if you also assign this template to them, they can also open the gate from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, you can add a new template by clicking here on the Add New button. Just enter the name of the template and configure uh, the time. Uh, you can see that you also have holidays here. Uh, when there is a holiday, uh, it does not matter which day it is, so it's Wednesday or Thursday, it will behave uh, as set in the holidays section. Holidays you can configure here in the holidays menu by double clicking on the given days or uh, by importing holidays from CSV. Uh, there are certain uh, websites where uh, the holidays are available for uh, countries or given years uh, and you can download in CSV which you can import here in the software. Now let's go back to the users and see what other options we have here. Uh, you can configure a custom rule, allow or deny the given user. Uh, this will override the access templates and will also override the group rules if configured. So for example, if uh, a user is not allowed to open the gate in a given period, due to the access template, uh, you can still allow the given user using the custom rule. Uh, we have already mentioned uh, the settings. Uh, it's the permission for controlling uh, gate number one or gate number two in the mobile application and controlling gate number one and gate number two by call. And in this section, you can configure the access to cameras, camera one, camera two, or call. So the given user will have two camera buttons in this case in the mobile application. Uh, gate position limit error uh, can also be sent by SMS to the number of the given user if you want to use this feature. In the mobile devices section, you can see all the registered mobile devices. Uh, if, uh, let's say, someone has uh, sent a registration request uh, and has used uh, the QR code for registration with approval, in that case, uh, the admins have to approve his or her registration, but you can do that here in the software uh, as well with this button here. For each uh, mobile application, you can uh, enable or disable push notification settings such as the doorbell, the technical error, and the gate position limit error uh, notifications. Uh, 
Uh, and there is one more setting here, the remove access. Uh, if uh, you want to give uh, access to a user to connect to the device remotely over the cloud, uh, you can add an access here. You just have to uh, select the given user and enter the password for the given user, write the settings back in the device. Uh, let me check if this user is a super admin. Yes, okay. But let it just be an admin. So you can see which uh, options can be accessed by the admins. And if you go back to the connection menu, uh, we close the USB connection and select the cloud connection, write the username and the password, and click connect. And we are connected through the cloud. You can see that admin can uh, access only the user settings, user related settings. Let's go back to the USB connection. Uh, we also have here a device register, uh, which uh, you can use uh, to register all your devices which you have programmed. Uh, you can register them by clicking on the Add New button. If a device is connected through USB, uh, the program will automatically read the device ID from the given device, so you don't have to enter that. But uh, if you have to, uh, so you are not connected to a device and you want to register it, you can read uh, the device ID here in the uh, status monitoring menu, and you can copy the device ID using this button here on the right side. Okay, so you just have to add a name for the given gate control. And when you want to connect the given device remotely, you just have to select the device from the list. Enter your username, your password, and you are ready to connect. Uh, let's see what other options we have here in the software. Uh, you can configure scheduled controls. Uh, with these templates, the, the device can open the gate and keep it locked in open state and then close the gate back at uh, the time of day which is configured in the given template. For example, you can add a template to open the gate on each weekday at 8 o'clock and close it back at 9 o'clock. You can also select the output to be controlled. If, uh, uh, if, an, if a control mode for two gates is configured. Uh, and you can do that up to 20 times a day because uh, the device uh, supports up to 20 uh, scheduled templates. This template will open and close the gate in the afternoon. So it will open at uh, 4 p.m. and close back at 5 p.m. Uh, for the IP cameras, uh, you have to use the links of the cameras only, so the camera itself does not have to be physically connected to the device. You just need the RTSP or the HTTP links from the device, depending on uh, which uh, type of, uh, of picture you want to use, a still picture uh, or the stream. Uh, the RTSP is the stream link, so you just have to enter the link of the camera in these sections and the device will make available the camera pictures in the mobile applications for users for whom this is enabled in the settings. Uh, how can you get the, the links from the camera? Well, you can use uh, the camera's documentation if it is listed in the in the documents or you can use uh, 
the software of the given camera, or you can use the software developed by Tel for this purpose. It's the camera detector. You can download this software from uh, our website. I think maybe it's here as well. Yes, it is listed here at the, in the software uh, download section as well. And you can also find it in the software section here, IP camera detection. Uh, this is available for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows uh, platform as well. Uh, to detect the cameras, just click on detect cameras button. Uh, the software will scan your local network and will list all the cameras which uh, have been found in the given network. Uh, we can see that we have two cameras here. One of them is locked with a username and password. So if we want to see the content, we have to enter uh, the credentials. Uh, and we have um, another camera which is open. We can see that it has two profiles configured, uh, high resolution profile and a lower resolution profile. Uh, and you find the stream URLs and the, the snapshot URLs for both profiles here. You can copy the URLs using uh, the notes icon. So you just have to click on the notes icon and then go back to the software and paste the given URL. Uh, you see that you have the local IP address of the camera here. Now uh, you have to do a port forward in the router for the given IP address and for the given port number uh, and uh, replace the local IP address with the external IP address of your router. Uh, for this, your router should, should use a static IP or should use a DIN DNS in order to be accessible from the internet. If you are using two cameras, of course, they should use uh, different ports um, in the, on the external IP. The device can also send reports. For example, it can send the event logs to up to four email addresses, uh, which can be sent daily or weekly. If you select the weekly option, you can configure the date and the time. Um, it can also send um, messages about administration, which means that uh, if the settings have changed, the device will send an email about that. Uh, it can also send email about unauthorized opening. So if uh, a user tried to open the gate when uh, it was not permitted, uh, the device can send an email about that. Or it can also send emails about uh, each opening and closing if needed. Uh, test report is available uh, up to four phone numbers by email or uh, by SMS. Uh, and you can configure the interval of sending and the time of day as well. In the group rules section, you can configure uh, group rules which apply to users, admins, super admins, or to incoming calls, which uh, can be received from private numbers or with a caller ID. So for example, if you want to enable anyone to control the gate in a given period from any number, but the caller ID should be presented, you can choose this option, add a name to the given uh, rule and choose the allow and configure the period for permitting the, the, the access these numbers.
in the reporting channels menu, you can configure the four uh, phone numbers and four email addresses, which the device uh, can use uh, to send the reports and uh, the test report, for example. And also, uh, for the input events, which you can configure in this section, you have the four contact inputs, and for each input, uh, you can choose to make a call to one of the four phone numbers, to send SMS to up to phone numbers, or email to up to four um, email addresses, with a custom message which you can enter here in the message section. Just checking if there's anything left which I have not talked about. The customization menu is used uh, to change the names of, uh, of uh, elements which you can find in the event logs. So, for example, you can uh, add a name to your inputs, or uh, you can also translate these messages. So, in that case, uh, the, the event logs will use the language which you have uploaded here. Uh, there are uh, a few templates for languages uh, available in the system which you can import using the import button. Uh, they are placed uh, in the program files menu where the software is uh, installed. You can see that we have the English, German, Czech, and Hungarian templates. Okay. In the event log section, you can read the event logs from the device. For that, you can configure the period and these are the, the elements which uh, you can change in the customization menu. The system logs menu is uh, used uh, to view uh, the debug logs of the device. Um, basically, you don't need that. It's just for troubleshooting if there is any problem with the device. Uh, the software will automatically store these logs in uh, the folder, which you can open by clicking on this link in the above menu. And you will find a logs folder here, where the logs are stored with uh, the date uh, in the file name. So these two files, module and remoter, should be sent to us if, uh, if uh, we will ask you to send the logs. And the settings menu is for the software settings. Here you can change the appearance of, uh, of the software. And you can also enable extended logging for troubleshooting. Um, we will ask you to do this if, uh, if necessary. So we don't need that basically because it just uh, increases uh, a file uh, in, in the log. So we don't need to use that on the really fast. Um, there is also a Wi-Fi model, which uh, I want to show you the settings for. Uh, in the connections type menu, you have an offline device selector where you can select the given model which you want to, to see. So the software will show you the settings for the given model and you can even uh, configure the settings, save the settings to file and then load from file when you want to program the given device. So this is for offline view of, of the settings and offline co configuring. Now if we select the, the Wi-Fi version, in the general menu we will see that we have uh, less settings. Uh, so the, the SMS and the call-based settings are not available for this version. Uh, here you can select 
the Wi-Fi um, SSID. Before that, you have to do a Wi-Fi scan, so it will scan for the networks, and then it will show you the available networks here in this list. Uh, you can configure the uh, Wi-Fi password, uh, the IP type, which is DHCP or static. For static IP, you can configure the network settings as well. Uh, about the system security, uh, communication is uh, encrypted between uh, the software and the cloud and between the device and the cloud and between the mobile applications and the cloud as well. And uh, the cloud itself, uh, the server runs in Amazon, which is also a secure uh, application. So the system is quite secure by that. 